using that average home price in 2000 of $159,000, if you took $160,000 cash, invested it into any of the major markets, whether it be the, the Dow, the S&P 500, the, the NASDAQ, any really any you know, market that, that we would invest in here in North America, you can see that starting in 2000, again, I, I apologize for anyone who's just listening, but basically if you started in 2000, your return as of today would be somewhere between 172 to 188%. So if you had invested 160,000 in 2000 into these markets, your return, your money today would be worth just shy of 300,000. Whereas if you bought a home cash, 160,000 in 2000, it would now be worth 720,000. So you'd have an extra, you'd, you know, 430,000. You're listening to the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast with your hosts, Paul Stevenson, David Warren, and Greg Campbell. Let's see what's going on in the world of real estate today. Hello. Welcome back to the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast, aka Toe Rep. I actually had an argument with my son this weekend about how that should be pronunciated, announced, whatever the correct grammar is. Gentlemen, we're back. I'm here with uh, Greg Campbell. I'm here with David Warren. My name is Paul Stevenson. I am one of the owners of Referral Mortgages in Ottawa and across Ontario. And uh, David Warren is my business partner at Referral Mortgages. We are both mortgage agents. And Greg Campbell is here. He is a managing director at the Agency Ottawa. And as always, Hello. we want to say thank you to our <laughs> sponsor, North Brew. If you go to northbrew.ca and use the promo code podcast, you'll get 20% off every coffee order and 20% of your purchase also goes towards Ottawa's homeless community. So good coffee, great cause. And uh, gentlemen, good morning. How are good you? Good morning. Well, that's shaking. Fabulous. Wearing my I, shirt. I, I think you're going to have another <laughs> argument with your son over uh, pronunciation and grammar after that, uh, yeah. that intro. Well, he was saying, uh, he was saying toe rep. <laughs> he said it should be, uh, should be two rep because it, it's just one O. I said, well, yeah. I said, but, you know, today is toe, you know, they did a toe, T O E. I mean, there's many words that flip flop back and forth between toe two and two. So, I mean, you know, potato, yeah. potato. Toe rep. It's, it just sounds more down when you say toe rep, <laughs> not two rep. Agreed. How was the weekend? <laughs> what you guys? Uh, what you guys get up to? Uh, I worked. I worked this weekend, and uh, I also hung out at home while I wasn't working. Working's good. Market's busy. Yeah. David, how was your weekend? <laughs> My weekend was great. I uh, got out. Uh, Got out for dinner, uh, picked up a new car on Saturday, which is great. We've been waiting uh, a few months for that. It uh, you know, takes a while to, to get anything in these days from a vehicle standpoint. I finally retired the 2005 Jeep with 240,000 I was going to say, you've never bought actually, a new car, ever. Actually, I didn't retire it. It's just dead in the driveway. It just needs a boost <laughs> or a new battery, and we'll still be back and picking. <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, figure it was about time to uh, yeah. Figure it was about time to switch to get something else, maybe a little more reliable than uh, than that thing. That I question whether it's going to break down every day or not. But uh, but yeah, that was good. And uh, baseball was back, so I uh, had to watch some baseball yesterday, which was fantastic. Good old nice buck. little snooze. Nice little snooze to <laughs> sweet sounds of Buck Martinez. We have a running joke with our friends that. Buck has the the smoothest voice for napping too. Just and here we are in the third in third <laughs> inning. Jays, welcome to Saturday. Night. Night. And I introduced Oliver to uh, the sweet sweet sounds, and he got a solid nap in as well. It was uh, it was, it was all around a good Sunday afternoon. <laughs> That's awesome. It's good. Napping, working, napping. Yeah, we're old. Gregory? That's what we do. My, my, my weekend, my weekend was great. I, uh, I did some work. I did some, uh, some relaxing. Um, I had clients in from out of town looking for some big property. And we went from um, Ashton to Greeley to Navin. Well, I was, so we covered quite a bit of ground and saw a lot of different, actually not a lot. We only saw a few homes because uh, some had sold previously. And, uh, but it was cool. We saw three, three different types of properties, completely different and uh really narrowed down what they want so we're uh you know, i'm looking forward to helping these guys find something and it's uh it's fun to shop in that 1.5 million dollar price point to see what that looks like nowadays yeah and what is that what does that 
equate to these days? That's Perfect. a. I'm, a, I'm assuming a row townhouse. It's it's it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's nice. They're nice. You know, some were um, some were a little bit older than others. So you know, there was that. You know, there was a couple that needed a little bit of work, but um, you know, er, er, just every house is different. Period. There's mm -hmm. one. There was one that was 1.5, and I was like, it's nice, but I would never like. I would never consider it. They wouldn't consider it either. You know, it had nice finishes, and whatnot. Backyard had this massive front yard, no backyard. Mm -hmm. You know, you got about 20 feet and then you're in a creek. And so it's like, you know, you're paying 1.5. I mean, it'd be nice to have an extra bathroom in the basement and not have a creek. I, I think it'd be Let interesting me. to see from Ashton what one and a half gets you in Ashton. And then what one and a half is yeah. getting you in Orleans and kind of that yeah. and Navin, like kind of that variance between them. Cause I imagine it's quite different. <clears throat> yeah, kind of. I mean, th there was one that we saw in Navin that was a million. And I was like, you know, it, it kind of made sense to me, but it wasn't big enough for them. Oh. And it was just a lot. Yeah. We saw, and it was crazy too. So we saw like a 1970s, 2006 brand new. So it was pretty cool across the board. Anyways, enough, enough about that. <clears throat> Let's get into some numbers, guys. What do we got? Well, I wanted to ask you a quick question. I, every time <laughs> no, I drive, <laughs> just numbers. <laughs> uh, every time I drive by a house, I, I have I, it, and this is obviously just because we're in the industry. I don't know if everyone does this, but I always think I'm like, I wonder what that house is listed at. Like that's just like the first thing I think of. Is there? Are they not allowed to put the price on the side? I know they used to have it like hanging on the bottom of the sign, like the list price. Is that? Is it that's just because crazy. they want people yeah. to go? online and take a look at it and get more eyes on it or is it just like i feel like putting the price gets people talking doesn't it, it you, you know what that that's really interesting because think about it when you go and look online for a car you know you, the price is there mm -hmm. you find the price you go and look online for a home i mean you go into the car i guess you know i guess it's just a matter of getting the getting the call talking to somebody you know it's sales right so when someone mm -hmm. calls it's like oh yeah you're, you're interested in in buying this item, oh, yeah, oh, let me, I can help you with that. Right. <laughs> I guess that's, is that why? Like, I mean, I would love to have the price on the, on the sign. I think that'd be a great idea. It definitely used to, I definitely remember back yeah. in the day for sure, but, but I definitely, it's probably for driving traffic to, to the, to the yeah. MLS site. So but I, but I will say, Paul, I drive around and I open my, that like realtor app up so often just to like check prices of places <laughs> of passing, or if I'm in yeah. a new area that I don't know, the, I'm like, I'm looking at it just to see what's there. Like when I was in Florida, I was literally going in different areas and I kept bringing it up. I'm like, oh, what are you getting here? Like, it's pretty addictive just to see kind of what you're getting in different areas or what's being listed where. I definitely is, do it all the time. This is basically my, my parenting style. I make my kids obsessed with numbers. So we do two things. When we drive by a house, we guess the price of it. And then when we're at a restaurant, cool. we guess what the bill's going to be. So they have like a complete <laughs> understanding of what things cost, you know? Um, I should start a. I should start a promo saying like, guess the price of this house and win a fifty dollar Visa gift card. You know, fifty dollar prepaid Visa. Yeah, guess just a random price. house. A great just, just drive by a house on the street. <laughs> just take a picture of it. <laughs> yeah, people see it online. Guess like, wait, price. that's my house. <laughs> um, so yeah. So last week I, I was talking about uh, historical home prices because I think it was re be really valuable for people to get uh, just a refresher. I know we've talked about in the past, but a refresher of historical price data because everyone is really concerned about the huge spike and there's going to be a crash coming and uh when are things going to level out and so on like we, we were facing questions about this almost daily and i'm sure you're dealing with it hourly greg um so we wanted to bring up kind of the historical prices in ottawa at least and i understand not everyone listening is is in the ottawa area but i mean you are able to find this data for your your demographic as well your area but this is just specific to Ottawa. But Stephen, if you want to bring that up, maybe we can just start way back in 1956 uh, and see where uh, where things have gone. And this is actually including condos. So 1956, just doing the math here, so 66 years ago, uh, the average home price was $13,351. And maybe, I don't know, it might be, I mean, I'm not going to go through every single year because that'll be a little redundant, I think, after a while. But Maybe we can just go every every five years. What do you guys think? How how fast should we uh, accelerate this data? Yeah, anyone that's watching, it. you can see it. But yeah. sure, for those listening. So 1961, 16,000. Uh, 1966, 18,000. 1971, just can't see it. 
There we go. Uh, 27,800. Uh, 1976. 54,000. So we're getting some bumps here. Uh, 1981. Shout out to the 80s. 64,800. 1986, 111,000. So a nice little bump there. 1991, 143,000. 96, 140,000. 2001, 175,000. 2006, 255,000. 2011, 343,000. 2016, 371. 200, 2021, 719,000. So uh, basically a doubling of, now, of home prices in the last five years. Now, now I do want to, as you were scrolling through and those that can see that are, that are viewing the image as well, though. So the last two years, obviously, are, are huge jumps. Mm -hmm. But if you scroll back, there's, there are a number of years where they're double digit growth. Um, yeah. You know, and, and within, you know, you're getting 14 and 10% in 2000 and uh, they go 2001. 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, in other years where you're 9%, 8%, uh, 21% uh, in 1983, 18% in 1984. So, you know, it's not 25, 21, tw 10, 25 in, uh, in 72 to 74. Yeah. And then three years prior, 19 mm -hmm. and 10% and, and 68, 69. So, you know, everyone talking about uh, this being um, such a, a rarity in the market. It's just not factual. Um, it's it, historically it's happened. It's just that we're dealing in larger dollar figures now, as opposed to in the teens or twenties or fifties where, um, it doesn't seem nowadays, but back then people were definitely like, well, my house just went from 50,000 to 70,000 as the average price. That's a huge jump. And people would be, uh, talking about it back then in the same manner. We don't think about that the same because a $40,000 bump, we're like, well, that's, what the hell is that these days? Um, but but it is this has historically happened, and and these past couple of years are not a rarity. And also, if you looking at that, another interesting stat is that there wasn't one year I don't think of a negative. There's a couple. Yeah, there's a couple significant. Negatives. Like ninety four, I don't even think one to ninety six, but it's yeah, it's like two point nine percent in ninety five. I mean, then it ramps back up. You know, you're back, you're back even in a couple of years. It's like mm. nothing. Yeah, I think it goes to show that it, you know, in that historical, you're getting bumps for two to three years, then it's coming, dropping back down to the low one, you know, single digits, um, and then and maintaining that for a few years. And we're very likely going to see that, you know, and, and Greg, you talked about it last week, I think, of, you know, seeing prices leveling off a bit, I think with those of that have been following the interest rates, um, not only bank prime has come up a quarter point. And they're going to likely make, you know, continuous more increases. Uh, but fixed rates have skyrocketed um, over the last month. And they are back to pre-pandemic uh, January of 2020 numbers, uh, you know, three and a half percent kind of as the average for, for five-year fixed across the major banks. Um, you know, they've come up dramatically. And so we'll, I think that will have an impact to, to the activity in the market. I think that'll slow down people refinancing and leveraging those to buy investment properties, which we've talked about it uh, in the past. But those that are needing homes or relocating and things like that, that's not going to stop them. But, um, you know, this interest rate coming up could certainly slow that down. But but historically, you look at those numbers, it's two, three years, levels off, you know, maybe a few years later, bumps again into the double digits. So it's very likely we're, you know, seeing that cyclical market again. And I know, Paul, you looked at the, at, you were looking at the S&P even, right? Yeah. So that's actually, what I was just doing the math here for, for an investment. So Stephen, if you have the S&P and kind of the market data there too. So using that average home price in 2000 of $159,000, if you took $160,000 cash, invested it into any of the major markets, whether it be the, the Dow, the S&P 500, the, the NASDAQ, any, really any you know, market that, that we would invest in here in North America, you can see that starting in 2000, and again, I, I apologize for anyone who's just listening, but basically if you started in 2000, your return as of today would be somewhere between 172 to 188%. So if you had invested 160,000 in 2000 into these markets, your return, your money today would be worth just shy of 300,000. Whereas if you bought a home cash, 160,000 in 2000, it would now be worth seven hundred and twenty thousand. 
So you'd have an extra, you'd, you know, $430,000 almost uh, by investing in real estate. Now, again, not saying that real estate is foolproof, but in Ottawa, the market is such that it's, it's insulated. And also, you know, there, there is value. And I mean, I know we talk about this all the time, but you're investing in a like brick and mortar. Like it's an actual physical structure that people are going to need. Like human beings are always going to need shelter. We're always going to need food at least for the foreseeable future. Food might be optional, but definitely we're going to need shelter. Um, and, you know, you're investing in brick and mortar and like an actual physical, tangible thing, right? If you're investing in the market, you're investing in a company, those companies could be bankrupt tomorrow. I mean, everyone who grew up in Ottawa, we all know about Nortel and what happened there. Uh, you know, technology, businesses, you know, the, the car industry, everything shifts over, like they're all cyclical, right? They're all, they all shift over time. Brick and mortar, like a, actual investing in a home is something that is going to be there, right? Like people are going to need shelter. They might not need an Apple computer in 10 years or a Tesla, you know, but they will need a home. So, you know, investing in brick and mortar to me is, is one of the most sound investments. And just looking at that chart over the last 66 years, again, in Ottawa, this is the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast, um, it, you know, it's a, it's a very sound investment and we can, you know, it's probably worthwhile us looking at other major markets in Ottawa to see what the historical data looks like. And if anyone is listening in, you know, Vancouver, Toronto, uh, Calgary, kind of any of these major markets in, in, in Canada, uh, if you're a real estate agent or anyone in the industry, please, you know, feel free to send us that data and we can certainly touch on it in the coming episodes. But what are your guys' thoughts on that as far as just, you know, I guess real estate as an investment as a whole and, and just the, you know, security of investing in, I, I'm a big. Way. I mean, I'm obviously uh, a big believer of of that. I, I mean, I think diversification is also important. And I will mm -hmm. preface it by saying all three of us, you know, me lesser than than Paul and uh, Greg invested even things like crypto that are beyond are even uh, you know when you talk about physical that that's even <laughs> less than. But diversify <laughs> yeah. diversifying your portfolio and 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 assets is is certainly important. Real estate has shown to be a you know, huge asset class for gener for generating wealth um, for that reason that you mentioned, Paul. And I don't, and and it's not going to go away. There might be a there might be a down, you know, there might be a downtrend for a brief period of time in any market, but in a major city and especially one like we're in in Ottawa, where we've crossed over that million population threshold, um, you know, things like that that. That, that trend is not going to continue. We're not going to have a, a long cycle of a downtrend, regardless of what interest rates do or anything like that. When we when you cross over that million threshold, your, your population jumps as well, um, which then it drives that demand uh, for brick and mortar, as you mentioned. Speaking of a million, 21% of the real estate in Ottawa right now is selling it over, well, has sold over a million dollars, 21%. Wow. I'm writing that down. Million dollars is like it's nothing today. It's like it's pocket change. Everyone's got a million dollars. And 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 none Wild. of this is to say that we want. <laughs> but the who market. actually has it? Yeah, Sorry. millions. A new thirty. Oh wait, no, that's is that. <laughs> <laughs> but none of us want the market to keep going up in, in increases of thirty no. percent, like no. it has. And and we're not saying that that is going to continue. Um, just that. You know, when looking at this past couple of years and people like hell bent on it being a bubble um, or hell bent on a huge or waiting for that huge downtrend to buy, looking at that, look at the historical numbers um, and you'll see where, you know, basically history will dictate where we're also going in the future. Just like, you know, you look at any chart pattern of a, a stock or an equity, anything like that, it gives you, it's an indicator of where that stock is going to go in the future in this this asset class where that's going to go in the future how it's going to trade if you will um so really look at that if you're if you're sitting on the sidelines and just waiting for a bubble to burst or a big downtrend certainly look at those historical numbers and not just the headlines of mm -hmm. you know what maybe cmhc might be putting out just like they were saying at the beginning of the pandemic that the market was going to collapse was going to crash by 17 percent in 2000 uh, or 2020 rather when uh, the pandemic hit the, you know, but look at those historical numbers and kind of see where, where the market's been and, and, and maybe make your decision based on that. Greg, you, I know you had some numbers too, on the different neighborhoods yeah. kind of surrounding Ottawa and where the prices yes. were five years ago. And today, do you want to 
touch on that as well? Yeah, I, I do want to touch on that because it's uh, it's pretty interesting to see. Which one do you have up there? The ones with the Alta Vista? Steven? Ottawa mm-hmm. proper. Yeah. Yeah, Ottawa mm-hmm. proper. Okay. Yeah, so... I think he's Greg's frozen here a little bit. So the uh, this chart is just looking at you know, the different you look areas. At these numbers. Oh, I mean, he's back. Am he's I back? back? You're back. Wow! Wow! <laughs> okay, let's like try Batman. that again. We made, we made it. We almost out. made it. Okay. So, anyways, yeah, the uh, it's it's crazy. These numbers. I mean, Barhaven is up 124 percent in the last five years. Um, Canada 115. Orleans, Cumberland 110. Stittsville 107. The other ones are, you know, I mean, they're still up. Alta Vista, 91%. Um, but the, the, the big ones, go to the next one, the Valley. And I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. Arn Pryor, 219%. So if you bought a property in Arn Pryor in 2017, you triple, triple your investment. 200,000 is now like six, 640,000. That's, that, that's just amazing, basically. Almont, 160%. Carlton Place, 149%. Kempville South, 154 Rockland, 112 I remember Rockland a few years ago when people were getting, they couldn't buy in Orleans. Some first timers I was working with, we went to Rockland and now it's like dream come true. Yeah. You know, they, they killed it. Um, anyways, it, it's tough. It's tough to look at this. You know, for people that bought in the last five years did very well. And they've, you know, if they've managed their finances properly, they've basically set themselves up for um, for a, a good future in terms of building wealth and depending on where they want to, you know, allocate all those funds, um, whether it's in real estate or other investments. Uh, but I mean, yeah, if you bought in the last five years, you're doing pretty well. And again, that's what I say the next five years. I don't know what that's going to look like. I think that's going to look more like the plateau, like we see in, in the historical chart, right? I think we're right at that peak and that plateau is about to begin. But again. Who, now, who do you know, we? when you were looking at those, uh, at those numbers, Greg, do you know what, uh, for the, the outlier areas like Arm Prior and Almont and whatnot, um, what their numbers were like 2000 to 2022? 20, like what I'd percentage have, growth it was in the last just two years? I've, I should dig dig deeper and get those. Because I, I would I would I would guess just based on uh, what I see of my clients and and our brokerage clients, uh, you know, there's been that shift to a lot of these smaller towns with people being able to work remotely or during the pandemic looking to buy bigger homes uh, for the price one getting priced out of Ottawa. So I'm curious to see if it how much of that 219 percent in Arm Prior is based on the last like two and a half years or three years if there was. Right. Uh, you know, um, but those are, I mean, there is, it's, it's interesting. And, and those, but those areas are seeing huge booms, um, you know. Yeah. Well, and especially, you know, since the pandemic, you know, you're, it's fair to say that obviously people move. Yeah. Out I'd be interested to get some of these that have been living there for an extended, you know, for 10 years, 20 years to get their take uh, for those people in Almon and Arm Prior, uh, how they see it, you know, because some, because you always get a conflict, right? Like people love it. And then people hate it and whether, yeah. you know, and so I'd be interested to see what that consensus is. Um, Cause they're, they're great little towns. Yeah, they're, they are. You know? they are. Um, it's certainly a lifestyle change if you're coming yeah. from, uh, from the big city. But I think with the way that the last two years have gone, that's that slower pace of life, I think is, uh, is being welcomed by many more people after, mm-hmm. uh, you know, people's values, I think, and what they, what they find important in life has certainly shifted over the last two mm-hmm. years based on, on, things outside of their control um i don't think we actually mentioned at the beginning of the day but happy uh happy no mask day uh this is the first mm. day in ottawa oh, that yes. we're able to uh <laughs> voluntarily go out without masks yeah uh which i know i know again we respect everyone's opinion if you if you're still wearing a mask absolutely not uh not criticizing in any way but just saying that we do have the option now to uh to not wear masks which is a you know from a mental standpoint i think it's a big motivation especially for kids and being able to see people's smiles i think is uh is going to change mm. people's yeah. overall behavior and and uh, just mood. So I think it's a good positive shift for uh, it is. People. And it's, it, I, I don't think I mentioned it last week, but we had a, it was a friend's party a couple of weeks ago. And we, you know, there was like 20, probably 20 of us in the house, 20, 25 people. And we were all just so happy. Mm-hmm. It was like, we had some of the best conversations ever. We were just so happy to be there, see each other. Um, just like a regular environment is like, you know, we never skipped the beat. 
everybody was just, you know, sharing stories and just catching up. It was amazing. So yeah, for mental health, definitely. I think it's going to be a, a welcome change for, for most. Um, yeah. Sunshine, more, more vitamin D and smiles. You know, it's a, right. it's a winning combination. <laughs> <laughs> what else can you ask for? Yeah. Mood boost. That's what we can ask for. If you're interested. I got I four. Them. I got all four today. Right. We'll see how they hit. Uh, <laughs> number one and a, exit all exit all the regular listeners. Uh, number one, uh, I wanted to learn how to drive a stick shift, but I couldn't find a manual. <laughs> Very topical today. <laughs> a lot of cars obviously not being uh, made manual anymore. Yes. Uh, number two, I was happy to hear that Humpty Dumpty had a great fall after such a lousy spring and summer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Check. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Uh, number three, uh, I watched a documentary last night about how ships are made. Riveting. Mm. Yes. And uh, last but not least, you guys know I like running. Uh, I was in the gym earlier, decided to jump on the treadmill. Uh, people were giving me weird looks, so I started jogging instead. Wow. Jumping. You know. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Uh, not, so... not going out with a bang. Not going out with a bang. That's yeah, I should have saved. I should have saved one of the other ones for the end. But either way, um, either way, good effort. On, it was a good on, effort. It was a good effort. Two two rep. Uh, so lots of uh, lots of numbers being thrown around today. Uh, if anyone is listening, if there's any specific areas or you know types of homes or anything that you want further numbers on, I mean we're obviously. I love getting into the numbers. I know both both you gentlemen do as well. So if there's any specific numbers you want us to uh, dig up for you or, or discuss on the show, please just drop it in the comments. Uh, as always, please subscribe and uh, you know leave a review if you're interested. And as always, the show it will be released Tuesday mornings, 10 a.m. on all podcast platforms. And last but not least, North Brew. If you go to northbrew.ca, use the promo code podcast. Uh, you will get 20% off all your orders and 20% of your order does go to the Ottawa homeless community. So good coffee, great cause. And uh, gentlemen, any closing remarks? Mm -hmm. uh, just that you said last but not least twice in the last couple of minutes. So that, I, I, that was an observation that I made. Last but not least. <laughs> last but not least, gentlemen, uh -oh. any remarks? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to use that as much as I can today. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least. <laughs> I don't know. Amazing. Who, who who listens to this show? <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. No one's listening at this All point right. in the show. It's just our, it's <laughs> just our it's family that's listening at this point. Um, <laughs> Even that they've tuned they? it out. Yeah. Are awesome. They? Great show, everyone. We'll see you next week. Gentlemen, have a good uh, good day, good week. Uh, Ethan, we love you. <laughs> you you too. Background. All right, guys. Take care, everyone. Later. Jesus. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe because we'd really like that.